Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after having put some finishing touches on our blacksmith. And I hope you all enjoyed how the blacksmith sign came out and the new window slats, as well as the new interior. And I hope you all had a good laugh at me completely breaking my health hammer setup and then stripping out all the powertrain and realizing that wasn't the problem. A couple episodes ago, when we were building the potter's house, or the pottery shack, we went deep into the earth because I had taken what I call a core sample, and I had found that not only do we have granite beneath our feet, but we also have some of that green stone that makes me flash a certain picture on the screen. And we also found that down here there is a pinkish grayish rock called phyllite. And here is that green rock that I cannot mention. And here is that pink rock, phyllite. And those are drifters. And we got some pretty good use out of this little mine here. And we were able to make the tower for our pottery shack as well as the chimney. And since we have spent a few episodes hanging around the house working on some of the more local projects, I've been sort of getting a hankering to head out again. And I think it is adventure time. I also wanted to go on an expedition because there are some stone types that we haven't found yet that I would love to get our grubby little hands on. For instance, there is a stone called Chert. It is a deep red stone, kind of like a nice deep red brick. And we don't have any of that. We also don't have any green or white marble, or chalk, or what else don't we have here? I think there's Kimberlite. We do have conglomerate, or at least we know where it is. And we haven't mined any of the clay stone that we found. And we also don't have any bauxite or basalt, although we do know where some basalt might be, or I suspect I do. But I would love to get my hands on some of these stones, if not all of them, and bring them back so that we can use them in future build projects. And in the case of bauxite, we need it to get into steel making. So to that end, I have filled my inventory with all kinds of things that we're going to need in order to adventure, once again. This time, we're going a little bit specialized, though, because we have a lot of ladders, because I want to take some core samples from various areas of the map. For example, the only core sample we have is from right beneath our house. But if we were to go, say, over here to the east, maybe beyond this pine forest here, we could take a core sample, and even if there's a familiar rock like granite, which we know is in this sort of gravel desert area, there could be other stone types down there. There could be andesite, there could be more peridoite, oops, there could even be kimberlite. But we won't know until we actually go and dig it up. And I think what I want to do is I want to go in all four cardinal directions. We'll go east, we'll go south, and we'll go a little bit west. And then we'll head north, and I want to get a core sample from around our old house. And then I want to go and get a core sample from our translocator, and then from different locations on the other side. And that's why I am bringing along our iron shears, because I also want to stop by the forest down there and get us some seeds for the bald cypress and for redwood trees and bring them back and start planting them in our little roundabout area here. So I think without further ado, it's time for us to get going and make good on this promise. We're traveling a little bit light in terms of weapons. I'm only bringing along our bow and our sword because the bow is actually a pretty good damage dealer. In terms of DPS or damage per second, it's about as good as our black bronze spears and it has a lot more ammo. And then the sword will just use for close combat. I prefer not to use it, but hey, we've got it. Let's use it if we have to. I'm not bringing along our heavy armor because I don't think we want to get into any like super heavy combat, and I don't intend on going caving. We just want to go straight down to the bottom of the world. And if that takes us into a cave, then we might just sort of reroute ourselves and find a new place to delve. And I'm bringing along our mining bag because we're going to find a bunch of different stone or at least a whole bunch of little stones and bring them back with us. I want to sort of rebuild our collection of regular stones too because we're running kind of short on those for making all that path. So I will bring you all back when we get there and we will see what we have. Well, we've gotten beyond or rather into the pine forest 
And I happen to stumble across a little trader here. So we're going to check him out. I think my... Oh, here bees. I think my hopes for finding a luxury trader are at an all-time low. Artisan. Of course you are. Okay. Well, that's that. But I do think we're about far enough out. We are... Yeah, we're decently far from home. I could almost go another sort of expansion of the map here. But I think we're far enough out. We are in Granite Area, and we're a good ways away from home. So let's just, I don't know, we'll dig right here. Right here. And we are just going to block that off. And for now, we're going to use the rope ladders. If we decide that we like the things we find here, I will replace them with the wooden ladders on our way back up. There we go. And I'm going to start using our bronze pick to rope pick the area. So we have that ubiquitous green stone that we know from back home. I think this is occurring a bit higher up, so I'm kind of hopeful there might be another layer deeper down. The rock strata in Vintage Story form kind of like in real life to some extent. It tries to emulate it and does an interestingly accurate dive, actually. There are different subduction zones and different layers of stone that can only be found in certain heights. Basically, there are three kinds of stone. You have igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. With igneous stone, basically meaning that it was made from volcanic activity. Sedimentary means it's just sort of settled bits of dust that get compressed into stone. And then metamorphic, which is stone that was sedimentary and has been turned into something else by time and pressure, and usually heat. And in the real world, or usually in the real world, you typically find igneous rock toward the bottom, and then metamorphic in between, and then sedimentary on top. And that's kind of how it works in Vintage Story. The sole exception being that basalt, which is also an igneous rock, can form on the top layer in order to emulate the action of actual volcanoes leaving deposits or leaving large strata of basalt around after eruptions. Now we are out of our rope ladders. We are going to be digging into our stash of the regular ladders, but that's fine. We brought along two whole stacks. And I'm probably going to go home and restock at some point. Probably once we've done the first three areas down south of our home. Well, it seems we just have granite, the greenstone, and andesite in the area. I'm going to give a little tippy-tap here just to see if there's anything in the area. I doubt there is. Eh, nothing nearby. Okay. So, we're going to head out of here, and I'm going to probably seal this place up, because there's nothing of interest here. At least nothing we can see. And I'm going to probably stay the night in that... Ooh, wolves. I'm probably going to stay the night in that trader's hut, or trader's cart, and then we will start heading toward the south. So, I am spending the night at the trader's, and I've already slept. I'm just waiting for dawn. So, I hear drifters, and I've heard wolves, so... But I'm glad I stayed here because I was looking around the map and I found right down here there is another trader cart. So that is in the exact direction we're going to go next. So our goal being probably around our clothing merchant down here to the south. And we will stop at this trader down here, see if he's a luxuries merchant. If not, we move on. But I did want to point out that you can typically guess about where traders are going to show up because they have a fairly standard distribution around the map. Or fairly... Yes, thank you, buddy. A fairly regular distribution around the map. So, for instance, see how close these are together? They make this sort of triangle. And the next nearest one that we see on the map is up here. And there's one down here. This is our commodities merchant that we go to all the time. And then over here is our artisan near the home. So when you get a feel of about how far they are apart, you can start to look in 
sort of a nice ring radius around each merchant. And that's kind of why I was looking at this area here in the first place. And that means that like up here, for instance, we could expect a merchant to show up maybe up in here. And I don't see one, but it is possible that their cart is maybe covered by some trees. Or it could be that they may have generated in water that was too deep for the game to support, so it said no, no merchant. But looking around the map is just a good way to find merchants if you are playing a game where you have map enabled. Sometimes people like to turn the map off for reasons, or if you're playing the Wilderness Survival, there is no map available there either. Well, I think it's about time for us to get going, so I will see you at the next merchant. Right here is what I was talking about a minute ago with the subduction zones. So here we have a meeting between Andesite, that green rock, and granite. And this is where one of those stones, or maybe two of them, push the others down beneath them, at least as far as where the world generation is concerned. So this could actually be an interesting place to dig again, even though we're not quite as far as I was going to go. Because when you have a long, long stretch of stone, it's kind of rare that you have that sort of huge, long soul kind of stone. So I might actually dig another shaft here and just see what's here. I'm kind of curious. Let's find out. So we haven't come very far, but already we have hit a new kind of stone. This is kimberlite. This is kimberlite in its regular full rock form. And it is a nice green stone that is good for green accents, or if you want to chisel, say, a painting and you want a nice green color. It also polishes up really nice into a very dark, deep ocean green that is great for, like, doing like a high seas image, especially like on a, on a stormy coast. And so I'm going to just grab a little bit of this and maybe a few of the actual pieces so we can bring it home as relieved rock. And that way we can actually see it in its polished glory. We will move on from here pretty quickly. I do want to hit the bottom here, but I'll check the bottom. I suspect it might just be andesite the rest of the way down. Yeah, maybe not. We're only at 88. We'll see. And then we will get over to that other trader. And we have hit rock bottom. <laughs> Time to leave. Our gear spins back very fast here, and we have nothing but kimberlite, so we will have as much of this green rock as we could possibly ever want or need. And in the case we come to mine this out, we're going to have a lot of adventure because I have heard a lot of groans from nearby caves like that. So... This place teems with excitement. And once we get up to... Actually, I can just do it here. Why not? I'm going to mark this on the map as Kimberlite. And I'm going to make this some kind of green. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll mark it as this. There we go. And the scary music closes in. Anyway, I will meet you all over at the other trader that we're going to explore now. And here we are, pushing the trader. I think... Oh, I have got some resin here. Let's take it. I have been gathering resin as we find it along the way. That was, uh... That was a close one. Hey, there's lava down there, and... Oh, there's iron, too. Oh, that is iron. Cool. And you know what? Let's go ahead and go take a look at that iron. This is a really nice, easy to spot iron vein, too. Oh, and there's a glowworm cave. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, so we have rich hematite in granite and the greenstone. So next time we need iron, we know right where to come. Well, let's go check out our trader friend. And I may stay the night in here because it is a high rift activity night, or very high. So, hey buddy, what do you... you are a clothing trader. Not what I am looking for. But you do have a bed, so I might stay the night just to get past this very high rift activity. And we will head 
where we will get back on course to our original destination. I'll see you all then. Oh, Terrapetta. Don't mind if I do. Not too shabby. And looks like we've come across some kind of Stonehenge ruin here. Yeah, look at that. I'll have to come dig through here later. Okay, we are coming up on our little trader here, and whoa! Now that's a ravine. Okay. Do you go anywhere? Or you just kind of interesting. Not really interesting. Maybe that goes somewhere. Could. But we are not here to explore the ravine. We are here to dig a deep, straight hole. We're going to dig it, like, right out here. That way, if we come up, we can just take a nap. Well, it looks like we actually had a situation where it just this green stone the whole way down. So that's kind of unusual, but not super rare. So I'm actually going to... Oop, that's real dark. I'm going to just drop a torch, say here for now. And I'm going to pack some of the stone up and just get it out of my inventory. Well, I think I might just hightail at home and weather the storm in our normal shelter. And then we'll continue our journey after that is over. Okay, with the temporal storm over, my inventory both emptied and refilled, we are out again. So, I'm going to meet all of you over in the basalt area, and we will see what there is to find there. Boy, after a grueling journey, we are finally here. There were wolves and mountains and drifters and caves, and oh man, that was quite a wild ride. So, we are here. We're not quite in the basalt area yet, or what I think is basalt. I'm just going to say hello to you. Oh, you got some more red bricks for me. Well, I don't need them right now. We are not here for that. We're going to go a bit farther this... Oh, we're already in the basalt area. Okay. So, basalt on the map is sort of just barely a different color than slate. It's kind of just a little less pink. And you'll see these black dots sort of scattered around. And we're going to go check one of those out. So these black dots on the map are obsidian stones. And you can pick these up off of the ground, just like you can with, say, flint. And they work otherwise like every other stone. You can throw them if you want to. And you can also nap with them. Now, you can't make everything. You can't make arrowheads. But you can make axes, hoes, knives, shovels, and spears with obsidian. And they're a little bit better than their flint counterparts. Not a whole lot, something like 10%, both damage and durability, but in the early game, it's really handy. So if you find yourself spawning in the early game in or near a basalt area, it's a good idea to just grab the obsidian and maybe leave the flint alone, especially if you can find enough obsidian to meet your needs. Now, I think, I'm not positive, but I think that when you find obsidian on the surface, I think it means that there's actually a sort of small deposit of obsidian right below. So we're going to go check that out and see if that's true. And while we're there, since we're all the way out here, we're going to go ahead and dig all the way down to the mantle again and see what we find there. So we're going to put these in our bag and I'm going to start digging. And there we are, obsidian right below us. Look at that. That was very quick. Let's go ahead and you can break these blocks to get just like usual one to four or maybe one to three pieces of rock. And you can relieve obsidian. So let's go grab a couple pieces here if we can. But you'll find that it generates in these sort of smallish flat disks. So you're not going to be getting a huge ton of them every time you dig them out. And obsidian can't be turned into things like bricks and it, I don't think it can be polished either. But it can be used for chiseling if you have something in mind that needs this sort of deep purplish-black color. So, 
We'll take a few blocks, and then we'll be on our merry way. And we're about to hit the bottom here, and I think we are not going to find anything else here. But we have a decent selection of stone. We have some andesite. We have that green stone. And right about right in here is a little cave with some copper visible. But we could come back later and explore that if we wanted to. But for now, I'm going to head up. I'm going to grab a few blocks of basalt because I didn't do that yet. There's also gold in this vein of quartz. Found some with a pro pick. But yes, I'm going to grab some basalt from above this really tiny sliver of slate. And then we're going to head out of here. I think from here we'll head north to our old home. And I know that there was some salt reading I found right around here. 25% right in here. This might be a fun place to delve, not just with a straight shaft down, but also to explore underground and see if we can find some salt. And from there, we'll head over to our translocator. All right, we have made it to our very original home. After a brief detour to a merchant who was unsurprisingly not a luxuries merchant. So I'm going to make sure there's something here that I need. I might grab some more of you. And we're going to head up to this area. We've got 25% halite and 25% halite here. Let's just go dig a hole straight down and maybe we'll get lucky. And I think in this area, if we do come across any caves that aren't too deep, I think I would like to explore them to see if we run into any salt pillars. Or domes, I should say. Anyway, let's get going. So we are here, and I found some neat little jack-o'-lantern mushrooms. And I have found a bunch of mushrooms along the way, and it's given me an idea for a build I might want to do later. So I've been marking them, and we might come back to mushrooms at some point in the future. But for now, let's see if we can spot... Hey, a cave. Here we go. Let's do a cave, and let's... Oh, hey! Oh, oh you're kidding me. You are kidding me. Okay, huge lead deposit. A glowworm cave. Oh, that's so gorgeous. I love it. A drifter cave. Oh, thank you. Love seeing you guys. And the thing we've been looking for. Salt pillar. Or a salt dome. Oh, this is this is a day. A salt dome covered in drifters, I'll bet. Yeah, look at you. Oh man. This is a nice day. This is a very good day. And we have some sylvite in here. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, that's great. Hey buddy, you coming up? I guess not. Okay. Can you get up here? Yeah, whatever. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to block this off so we don't have to worry too much about other drift. Holy cow, this is a giant salt dome. Oh, man. This is huge. Okay. Well... I think I might come back with more dirt later, but for now, we are marking this as our salt dome. I am not going to have to spend billions of gears buying salt anymore. That is too cool. I think we will still dig down, maybe from here, and see what other rock strata we come across. Re really? Alright, sharpshooter, let's go. Come on. Maybe I will just block off maybe this area here. That ought to do. Let's mark you as salt. And you know what? We'll just take some too. Why not? It is even, I think, visible on the map. Look at that. If I had known what I was looking at, I would have been here ages ago. So this is a salt dome. 
and this will extend the entire way down to the mantle. And if it's visible here, this probably means that we're only, I don't know, a dozen or so blocks above the next layer down, which should be igneous, because shale is a sedimentary rock. And these salt domes sort of, they stick up a little bit into the sedimentary layer, but they extend the whole way down through the igneous rocks to the mantle. And salt is the only place, or I should say halite, is the only stone in which you will also find sylvite. And you'll find them as these sort of patchy red ore bits. And I'm going to take like one block as a sample, but by and large the sylvite's only purpose is to be ground up into potash for fertilizer. So I'm going to take some of this out and I will take a sample both of the rock itself and of the sylvite, but I'll just grab some salt stones and take them home. And just because I was curious, this is the entire size, or the diameter I should say, of this salt dome. So these are pretty big. This will supply us with enough salt for this game and the next 10 vintage story games that I ever play. And now we're just going to dig down to the mantle again and see what other rocks try to be passed through. And we will see that, and we will see if, it can be confirmed that this halite goes the whole way down. Okay, we have hit the mantle, and it kind of shrank away from me a little bit ago, but I think... Yep, there we go. So it is just off in this direction. But for now, let's get out of here. We'll go back to our old home, and we will sort of organize our inventory and probably leave some stuff here, like some of the andesite we don't really need as much of. There weren't any other new rocks here. We just went through a layer of slate to get here after the shale. So we're just going to pull it ladder up behind us and move on. And here we approach our little way station. So we have granite here. Okay. So we'll dig down. I'm not super concerned about this area because we're probably just going to find more granite. But let's give it a dig. And then we will cross this threshold and see what we have on the other side. Oh, that was silver ore. Well, we have silver here, I guess. Cool. And we have nothing here but granite and lava. So we're going to just drop that there and head back up. And let's get to the other side of that translocator. Oh, what, uh, what great visibility we have here. This is truly something wonderful. Can I get, like, nope, not at all. Okay. I guess we're going to be digging in Snow World. Let's just go another block out and start to dig again, just like back at home. Well, we have made it to the mantle, and it is granite the whole way down, but it doesn't start till pretty deep. I think the slate layer goes to like 65 or so, and then the clay stone goes all the way down to like, I don't know, 80 or 70 couple. It's a pretty deep sedimentary layer. And right in here, we have some gold, so I'm actually going to, I think, start picking up some of these ladders here. Oh, we've got a splasher. I want to get some of these ladders up, and then I want to put down... A dirt block, probably one more block down. There we go. And then we'll start making a more permanent ladder here. And this deposit of quartz didn't have anything in it, so I'm going to just ignore it. And at some point we will explore this cave once I come back with better armor. But for now, I think we're going to go rest, and then we will go and pick up some seeds from those trees. And maybe some wood. I don't want to load up too much, but it will be nice to just have some without having to wait for it to grow. So, I will see you all there. And what do I see over here? But the first southerly crop that we have seen so far. We have sunflowers. Just the one. But that is a promising sign. So, hello. I might grab those. 
After I take this little hole out. <gasps> Sulfur? Okay, I'll take it. Shoot. You can bet we're coming back here because we are out of sulfur at home. And we need that for gunpowder and for medicine. Actually, for blasting powder. Now, these sunflowers are just a single one. They're 8 out of 12. You know, I'll just take them. And we got a seed. Okay. So, as you can see, these grow in about the same conditions that flax grows. But you won't find them naturally, typically, until you get at least a little farther south than the temperate areas that you start in, typically. So, I'm going to keep my eyes out for more southerly crops and see if we can find any interesting ones to bring home and grow in our greenhouses. Okay, we are closing in on redwood and cypress territory. So, I think what we'll do is we're going to use this guy's art as sort of a base of operations. I don't want to go home with a ton of redwood and I also don't want to ruin this forest, so I'm going to find one that's kind of apart from the rest if I can, and maybe have to go sort of toward the edges up there, like maybe take out one of those trees over here. So we'll just see what we can do. And you have a bed, right? Yes, you do. Okay. And what do you have today? Nothing. Okay. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to sort of work from the outside and get some of these cypress seeds going and get a little bit of the wood too and then we'll pack it up and head home and at some point <laughs> that's funny after that we will sit down and take a look at the new goodies we have and the new building materials we have access to Well, here we go. So here are what the cypress seeds look like when they are on the ground. So we're going to just swim around here and see if they drop more than one. It doesn't look like they did. Just a stick. So I haven't known these to be particularly generous or stingy, but we'll just take this guy out and be on our way. Okay, we've got our seven bald cypress seeds and managed to even replant all three of the trees we took down and I think I'm gonna put some stuff into our travel chest and then I want to find a redwood that's sort of secluded from the rest and take it down starting with leaves so I'll go find one and then we'll get working on that I do love the sound of the rain on the tree leaves now, this one here seems to be pretty well unattached from the rest of the forest. It's got some branches that stick out, but I think we can shave those off so that when we take the tree down, it won't just clear out the entire canopy around here, so we don't want that happening. So, I'm going to start shimmying my way up this tree and taking out its leaves. And these can be very stingy with their seed drops, so we're going to have to take out like the whole tree, and we'll be lucky to get I'd say one or two seeds, honestly. At least in my experience in 1.15. I don't know if the drop ratio has changed in come to the ground every now and then to see if we get any seeds. And we have to kind of look very carefully and just sort of comb the area because the seeds are very small. They look kind of like pine seeds, but they're like half the size, if not less. I don't think we got any, but... So let's keep working on this and hopefully we'll get a seed. Thinking that while night is falling, I think I'll take that time to dig us a little hole down and see what kind of rocks are beneath us. Well, it seems that aside from slate and granite, that's all we have here. And mantle. And it is oddly stable here. Look how slowly our gear is going backwards. 
if there were any caves in the area, this would be a great place to go exploring because we could be out here a long time and not have to worry about it. But we will come back to that at some point. I'm actually going to put some real ladders down because I found a deposit of hematite up here somewhere. I didn't see it, but it came up on the pro pick. So, yeah, this will be a good place to come get some iron. Back to the trees. Let's get going and get us some seeds. Well, I was going to say we can see for miles up here, but, uh, yep, not with the rain. These trees also have a secondary redwood log texture they use for the branches, and these are just, like, single logs, like you would find on any other tree. So this is the only tree in the game that I know of that has two different kinds of logs associated with it, making it kind of unique. Do you see it right there? That little nugget? That is our first seed. And I intend to go capture it before it despawns. And there it is, our first redwood seed, but hopefully not our only. Ouch! That hurt. Well, at least we can maybe clean up what's on the ground here and see if we can happen upon any more seeds that dropped. Or these sticks play splishy splashy in the bathy. Okay, as creepy music closes in, I think we are good to cut the rest of this tree down from the base. That's my shovel. And here goes a whole lot of nothing. Oh my. Rain. Rain. Absolute rain of tree parts. It's still only one seed. Yep, just the one seed. That's a shame. I'm going to go run some of this over to the trader, pick this all up, and we're going to head home. Well, while I'm sad we didn't get more than one seed, that's kind of how it goes with these redwood trees. And I think what we'll do is... I'm going to just hold off on getting any more. We'll plant the seed at home and let it grow. It will take a very long time to grow. I think it's close to a year. And then we'll just try to get more seeds from the seed. And if we don't, then we'll come and ransack this forest again. Anyway, I'm going to get all this home. I'm going to make another trip up to our old home to pick up the extra chest we left up there. That's full of goodies. And then I'll meet you all back at our home on the ridge, where we will take a look at what we've got. I'll see you then. Okay, everyone. We have finally made it home. And it's been a couple days. I had to make several trips out and back to get all the things that we had acquired. But I have put most things away, and we have a pretty good collection of new materials. And in the room to my left, I have staged a sample, a showcase of all those materials. Let's take a look. So here are all the new materials we have access to, and all the colors that they give us for building new builds. I am excited to have these. So let's start with the halite, also called halite, depending on where you're from, I guess. But this is a nice pink rock. Unfortunately, it can't be polished, and it can't be turned into bricks or cobblestone. It only breaks down into the halite rocks that can be crushed into salt. But this can be a nice accent for certain chiseling projects, maybe like a, a pink nose for some kind of creature, or maybe whatever else you need pale pink for. We have here the sylvite, which only spawns in halite. And this I showcase not as a material, but to showcase that this is one of the fertilizers we can now just go and dig out of the ground instead of having to purchase from our good buddy, the commodities merchant. Over here, then, we have the stones that we have found. We have kimberlite. So this is the green rock. Look how nice and dark it is when you polish it. It's just so nice and actually green. Very foresty, very oceany. 
And then here is the unpolished rock, somewhat paler, but still very oceany. And then we have the cobble. Now there is no brick version of Kimberlite, which I think is kind of a shame, but that I don't know if that's going to be coming in a future version or if Kimberlite in real life is sort of too crumbly to turn into brick. I know there are some cases where certain stone types don't have brick because that's kind of the case in real life. So then we have over here, we have basalt, or depending where you're from, basalt. But this is a very sort of a nice flat black color. So with slate, like our roof, we have this kind of reddish brownish tinge to it. And shale is more of a gray color, but basalt is just nice and deep black. So when we want something black in our builds, we can come to this and find what we need. Then we have claystone, and claystone is an interesting one, because as a rock, it's just sort of this tan, but it's a nice sort of earthy tan. But you polish it, and you get this really warm brown color that when you work it in with less saturated colors, like grays and some of the grayer browns, this can actually make for a great pop of color. And then, of course, there is the cobble and the brick versions, both of which are kind of closer to the original stone's earthy hue, but with some differences. Lastly, we have obsidian, and I have it standing on this little stick here because uh, there is no polished version. You cannot do anything with obsidian aside from either use the block itself or break it down into the stones. But this could be interesting for, I don't know, some kind of chiseling project, maybe like a, a night sky kind of background. We could chisel some limestone or chalk or marble stars in. That could be interesting. And lastly, we have the wood types that we found. We have bald cypress, both in the log and the planks form. And the log has this sort of interesting gradient that you don't see on all of the different kinds of wood, but it gets sort of very dark at the corners and then very light in the middle. And then with this sort of very pale, speckled heartwood. And the planks keep that sort of pale and speckling, and they have that sort of run the whole way through. And it's kind of an interesting, noisy wood compared to most other woods in the game. And then we have the redwood. Now this, like I said, redwood has two kinds of logs. It has the quarter log from the main trunk, and then the redwood logs are made from the branches of the trees. I think it's interesting that the regular log is so much more vibrant than the quarter log, but I think that kind of makes sense. Like, the quarter log is going to be older wood, and it's going to be, you know, closer to the ground, rotting, whereas this stuff's going to be, you know, younger. Still have a lot of water flowing up the xylem. And then we have the redwood planks, and they're kind of an interesting texture. They're actually a fairly dynamic texture. You'll see that it's not the same, like, saturation and lightness the whole way through. We have this pale pink over here that darkens to this sort of earthy color, and then this next board is more of a yellowy color, and that kind of turns a little red. And then this one has just a very tiny strip of that pale yellow, and it's even more saturated, and then the rest of it is just sort of deep red and orange. So this is a really nice color for adding some pop to your build, although if you don't want such a dynamic texture, you may have to look at other options. Anyway, everyone, that's about all we have time for in this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed our big romp through the countryside and our delving deep into the bowels of the earth to find different stone types. There are still a few kinds that we haven't come across yet. Aside from the marble, we are still looking out for some bauxite, and I think there might be one other stone type, but I've checked the bins for that. So we will be doing this again in the future at some point. And I'm personally looking forward to using these new stone and wood types in future builds. Anyway, as always, my name has been Kurazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.